Welcome to today's adventure with Slow Ride Guide. Today, we're gonna to talk about BNR Flats. BNR Flats, one of my favorite places to fish. We have a lot of opportunity in the coastal bend from north to Rockport to south to Corpus Christi. We are blessed with an immense amount of world-class fishing, but today we're going to specifically key you guys in to BNR Flats. It's one of my favorites. Been fishing out here for 20 years, have watched the evolution of kayak fishing what makes this flat so awesome is access to deep water, easy access from the road, easy to fish. There, it's not a unique area, but it has all of the characteristics that you look for. Whether you live, you know, Galveston, Matagorda, Aransas Pass, or Corpus Christi, the characteristics of this flat that I'm going to talk about today do apply to your neighborhood. So when you see the same things, when you see the same scenarios, it's going to lead you to areas where fish live, where they're going to be feeding. And we'll talk a little bit about why they feed in these areas. The thing about BNR Flats, and actually BNR Flats is named from Brown and Root Flats. Way back in the beginning of time, there was a Brown and Root yard over here um, by the ferry landing where they built drilling rigs and offshore rigs and it just the name has has stayed the brown and root has been long gone but the name still applies and it's kind of interesting it has its own different areas that are referred to a little bit differently the brown and root flats has kind of more commonly became referred to as this entire flat from the causeway to the corpus christi channel to the drop off to the shoreline by the ferry landing once upon a time the brown and root flats more referred to the flats back in the back and the drop off over here behind me was referred to as the east shoreline but as times change and things evolve the name has grown to cover pretty much all of it but what makes it special what makes it interesting it is a an ultra shallow flat that is surrounded by deep water so it has a lot of current that flows across this when the tide moves towards the channel towards the aransas channel there are bridges along that way and there's passes under those bridges so when the tide flows water comes under those bridges flows across these flats and creates a lot of current fish love current it carries what they eat it carries scent it leads them to what they're hunting for so it has that ingredient the drop off behind me is Redfish Bay where it's a very dramatic drop off. This flat is one foot to two foot deep and it comes to an edge, a very distinct drop off. It's like a wall and there's little cuts, there's little drains all along that sandbar. So it has areas where water flows on and off. It flows in from one side, off the other, creates a lot of current. Whenever very dramatic weather conditions take place and these fish vacate the flat, they have safety in a very short distance. And when that passes, it's very easy for them to move back onto the flats. During periods of high tide, they get really comfortable back in the back along the shoreline. Today, we have really lower than normal tides today, so we're fishing close to the edge, close to the drop-off, close to the drains, close to the arteries that feed these flats. So those fish have an avenue where they move on and off, you know, for their feeding periods. Ooh, oh, tell one up out there. Big reds. 
the blind cast into the sand holes is what's been paying off for me. Beautiful fish. Cruising the flats today. This guy here went for the ball tail shad. And so it's super shallow grass, really thick over here. Weedless setup right here. A little soft plastic, hide the hook. Nice little weight, just enough to assist in casting, but it rides up on top of the grass. A lot of these big bruisers cruising the flats. BNR flats, about one mile paddle from the road. Super low tide today. Drop off out here in front of us. If you want the reds, you come up on the grass. We pushed through six inches of water and we found a few little impressions, a little few depressions in the flats where it can be one foot deeper, it can be six inches deeper, and it is like a whole nother world. They weren't in the ultra shallows, but we found just a little bit of a dent in the bottom, and it paid off with a beautiful fish. We've had some really great days out here, but we've gone through that rhythm where we come out early, we get some action first thing, and then we go through a spell of two or three hours where it's really quiet. Today, we actually hesitated. We launched about 10 o'clock. We came out for the midday action and were absolutely rewarded with some beautiful fish today. We came straight to the spot where I had a feeling they were gonna be, and within two or three casts, we were hooking up some great fish. That action continued pretty good. Um, yesterday, when we were out here, we left them biting. It was just amazing action. Came back today to duplicate that, and it was pretty close. There weren't as many fish today, but they were bigger. There were some upper slot reds, amazing battles, really fun time today. It's really not a maze of islands and channels. BNR Flats is more open area opposed to the Lighthouse Lakes, which is right across the road. You can see it from here. But the Lighthouse Lakes Trails is an endless maze of little creeks, lakes that connect all together, that intertwine and intermingle. BNR Flats is more of a wide open area with a lot of little islands, and you're gonna see that in the aerial photos. Not real extensive reefs, but just little oyster piles, kind of sporadic. But it is very consistently shallow. From the drop off to the back shoreline, from corner to corner in this place, it is very shallow water. So on a low tide period, it doesn't really give access to a lot of motorboats. During low tide periods, it's like kayak only water. We're at the break of duck season, so there's been a few airboats out here running around, but as far as skiffs and motorboats, today they would have a very difficult time. So we had it all to ourselves, amazing paddle today. Saw a few other kayakers on the way saw one boat that ran into the sandbar on the edge was actually getting towed off it's one of those things that happen when they make that mistake it looks like you can run there but navigating this place on a low tide is very difficult and here we are in the middle of december short pants barefoot the water is very warm very summer-like conditions today. Earlier it started out kind of interesting the way it's changed. I got some fly rods with me today that I was had intentions of casting to some tailing fish and stuff like that, but all of our fish came on the paddle tail worm. Weightless, it's not exactly weightless, but it's very ultra light, weedless rig up on the paddle tail. Had the ball tail shad, the K Wigglers ball tail shad, also caught a couple on the paddle tail as well. So it was overcast early, but the sun has come out really bright today, amazing. It is like very summer-like out here today, probably pushing 85 degrees. I love the hooded shirts, keeps the sun off my ears, off my face, sun gloves, all the AFCO gear. In the summer, it's critical. It's like life or death heat out here. But today, for a winter day, it was very much like summertime as well. So couldn't spend the time out here in the sun exposed 
without protection on my skin. So thanks to the guys at AFCO for being a big part of the show. Thanks to the guys at Shimano for being a big part of the program, providing us with reels. The FTU Green Rod, it's just amazing the performance. The years of technology, the years that have gone into perfecting this rod, the ability for a seven foot rod to cast an ultra light lure which is only a 16th ounce the only weight on the lure is the hook the worm and a little weight attached to the shank so a spinning rod 10 pound braid nice little fluorocarbon leader and amazing how much water i covered with this rig today the grass back there also is very different. It's very lush, it's very thick. The bottom is muddier because it doesn't get the circulation. Compared to the front side out here by the drop off where we're at today, it's very hard sand bottom. The wind just ravages this part on windy days. So it blows away a lot of that sediment and it leaves the sand so it leaves a really hard bottom. Out close to the edge, which from where we're sitting right now, you can almost see where the color change is, but along that edge is a hard sandbar. It's like walking on a sidewalk. It's like walking down the street. It's so easy to wade fish. You can walk up to the edge to where it's knee deep or thigh deep, and within casting distance, you're hitting six to eight feet of water. So in a short distance from the backside of BNR that's very secluded, very thick, very lush grass, it changes along there in between. Right through the middle of BNR is the sailboat channel. You'll hear people talk about the sailboat channel. It's pretty well known for launching. Probably back in the 30s or 40s, there were oil field, oil wells, and different um, drilling that took place out here. That, that no longer takes place in these areas, but the channels are left as remnants of that time. So there's very deep water that cuts right through the middle of this flat. It's not really long, couple hundred yards, but it tees off into the middle of the flats. So you have a lot of variety here from the first bridge to the sailboat channel in the middle to these flats in the front to the drop off. And from here, looking towards the Corpus Christi channel, we still have another two miles of water two miles of flats easily between here and the channel. So you can be as adventurous as you want. You can plan for a long day of fishing or you can do a two or a three hour trip. And today we're actually within sight of the vehicle that brought us. And we spent some time here, about an hour and a half. We caught some amazing fish, shot some aerial footage. A big part of our series is teaching we want to help you learn more about the tackle, learn more about the kayaks, and we're going to make a move now. We're going to start our trip back towards the truck, but it's not just let's take off and paddle to the truck. We're going to fish our way back. There's an amazing amount of beautiful terrain in a really short distance. So hopefully we pick up a couple more between here and the truck. All right, this fish ain't no joke. Here, guys, big red, ultra shallow water. You can see where I'm sitting right here. Water is just about shin deep, but we have got some big, big fish cruising the flats today. Here we are, middle of the afternoon. Look at this thing. Look at this thing, guys. Oh, oh, not quite done yet. Not quite ready. Still got a little fight, a little fight left. World class sight casting to redfish, as good as it gets. Take a quick, easy paddle to some of the most beautiful fishing. Texas has to offer. They're pursued all up and down the coast and we have some of the best right here, Redfish Bay between Aransas Pass and Port Aransas. 
27 inches long, probably seven and a half pounds, seven, seven and a half, beautiful fish. We made it back in, made a nice little paddle across the flats, loaded up, made it back to the shop here this evening. It was a great day on the water. Hope you learned something about fishing brown and root flats. Hopefully uh, those tips help you in planning your own trip in the future. And that's it for our show today. We brought a couple nice keepers in today. I'm fixing to get off this porch, go clean a few fish. Me and Luna are gonna have a nice fish dinner tonight. She always enjoys the spoils of our victory. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.